What's up, guys? Ziggy here with Altec Unlimited. It is Thursday morning, a rainy, gloomy, crappy, dark day. Just got in the garage. Let's build some stuff. So this one is definitely going to be a interesting setup. It's the Ruger American Comp with the TLR8, uh, Streamlight TLR8. Um, yeah, so it it is going to be interesting. There's a lot of curves. There's a lot of uh, sharp angles on this guy, but we're going to do a best. It's going to be a two-piece pancake style and uh, get out all of your blocking. So I have uh, my aluminum blocking that I have for this. Uh, the one I'm using is, if you look at it, the same width as a flashlight, which is what you would want. Uh, when you're doing light bearing, you don't want the bottom of the light to be fully covered. You know, like in this case, it'd probably be best to do something like this, but I don't want that sharp angle. Um, so you could do something like that. You, you don't really want to cover it up. Now, if you cover it up like so, and you got the holster going and you got a good retention, you're still gonna, you're gonna have this in the holster and that's just not good. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get both my pieces of my aluminum that I made. There we go. And one is going to come up here like so. Uh, or we'll do it this way, one or the other. But our retention point is going to be this right here. On this side, we're actually going to cover the whole thing like so. Because we do want most of this exposed so you don't get that rocking because the pressure between the top of the slide and here is what stops it from doing that. So we're going to mount this guy right here. And then the other side, we're going to do it just the opposite. That way we can get um, retention right there. So... And that'll be... That'll be it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, Good right there. And of course. Again, if this is if you're borrowing somebody else's flashlight, you want to layer it and tape just below your blocking, uh, mainly so you don't scratch it. This is mine, so I don't care. All right, next is going to be blocking for the controls, which is actually angled like this. So we will keep it that way. That feels good. I also get a lot of questions on what these are, so let's, let's get into that. This is aluminum flat stock from Home Depot, and I've said it before in another video. It is 
0.131, you know, give or take a couple thousandths is when you're going to buy it. These have been bent and mangled, so um, at least 0.130. Uh, you could get them at Home Depot in different uh, widths, I believe. This is one width you can get, yep, and then the other one is this size. I made the one in the middle by just cutting it on the bandsaw, so this is this is cut and made to fit. But they're relatively cheap. They're like 12 bucks for like a four foot section or something like that, and then you could get a lot out of it. So that's what I use. Let's continue on this guy. And we will tape all the way around. And right here is another piece. So we're gonna have to block that. Now this is gonna be a right hand inside the waistband, outside the waistband. So it's gonna come up and go this way. So you really don't, I mean, you could get away with something like this. You could get away with pretty much anything. Just make it look, make it look good. Stops right there. So we'll go. So that's blocked, and now we are going to need a piece for the retention. Uh, so you could take a piece of your quarter inch um, MDF, and then you can physically mount however you want it. We're going to go, actually that looks good right there, we'll go just like that. This will allow for one retention point. We'll stick it right here. And almost forgot. We gotta cover that screw and I'll use a penny. Just ran out of tape. So let's cut a couple pieces of uh, black. I'll get it going. I got all that stuff in the oven. It is heating up. Once it's out at 350 degrees, I will go ahead and throw it in the press. Now, I am trying to get a hold of someone. I did some work for them. Their phone is disconnected. So, Roger Swanson, if you are watching this, please get a hold of me. Whether call me, since you have my number, or uh, send me an email. Now, I have... Uh, like six or seven shells for you that you wanted. So please give me a shout because your no, your phone number is disconnected. So thank you. Check out this new tape measure holder we did. So I just did it this morning. Bam. Cause I just got the clips in from uh, holstery, which is this clip right here. And we're gonna be making another one along with a uh, hammer holster. So stay tuned. I'll probably film that one just because. But anyways, this is pretty epic. So it's obviously the Punisher skull, but we'll do more. All right. Yeah, this is our contour gauge. So we'll take that and mark out where the flaps are going to go. That gives you a straight line over a contour, hence contour gauge. You can find them at this is a Home Depot, pretty cheap money.
and take your belt loops, line them up where you want them, draw the outline, and I mark where it's drilled. And then take your drill guide and mark the spots. And I always on a light bearing will add another rivet on the inside and then draw out the rest. It'll come straight and then go up. Yee -yee. Same thing. Put a river right here. All right. Once you got everything marked, go ahead and drill it. These are quarter inch holes. Just make sure you don't move your guy. Separate, get the gun out, then grab a couple rivets, and then line up your holes again, reattach, clamp, and then drill your retention hole. Lost my tremor.
Now's the simple part. I'm gonna go ahead and bend these. Since we do it in the foam press, there's no way that we can have it in there unless we have a fixture. I don't do it that way. I don't like it that way. I have always done it this way. This is how I like it. Uh, take your firearm, get it in the holster, and obviously my jaws here, if I close down on the rivets, I will mark them. Uh, you'll mark the kydex and whatnot. So I have, this is um, cloth from, uh, I think I got it from Sam's Club. It's um, like potato sack texture. So, but I put it in the jaws just to above the uh, eyelets. And then don't keep your heat gun in the same spot. Go back and forth and then switch sides back and forth. And then what I do once I get it in the position that I want, I'll blow it with air. Now here's a little tool tech tip. When working a heat gun, it is a very, very bad idea to shut it off once it's up to temperature and all that. Put it all the way to cool and let it run. That way it cools down the filaments inside and it doesn't prematurely kill your heat gun. Now this one is like almost $200. It was like 180 or something like that or 150. So definitely don't want to keep replacing these. I've had this one for quite a few years. Always let them cool down. Now it's time for final assembly. We got our inch and a half here. You can see I cut them at an angle and then I go ahead and just shine up the edges. Half inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. I'm gonna Loctite them and set them in and then we'll have one more thing to do to complete this holster. What do you know? Another good video on making an OWB pancake for the Ruger American Compact with TLR8. Hell yeah. This is going to be packaged, shipped to the uh, gentleman that ordered it, and have some fun, make some money, and do something good.